Yo, what's going on guys? Cinematic. Um, I wasn't even going to talk about this subject again, and I didn't even use a gameplay, because I haven't been gaming as much lately, because I'm not having fun playing a lot of the games that I want to play. But, Michael Condry released a, a statement about, you know, reverse boosting and everything in the game, and uh, he mentioned that skill-based matchmaking was going to be a part of the game, they were not going to take it out, um, and that... You know, it's not affecting your uh, match quality or, you know, how you connect to games and things like that. And I'm not even going to argue that fact. I don't even care about that fact. Um, I just think that skill-based matchmaking in itself should be in a ranked playlist. Like league play, ranked play, whatever they want to call it. For competitive players because, yeah, of course, if you're trying to be an MLG pro, you want to play against people of your caliber or better I guess but but let me break down I want to break down why I think skill based matchmaking is part of the decline of Call of Duty and it started in that I know of I know Black Ops 2 had skill based matchmaking they took it out of the game they as far as I know I'm almost 100 percent positive that they took it away from the game and the game played a lot better I understand why they want to put it in the game but I don't understand why they want to put it in the game. The reason, and, and you guys can let me know in the comments whether you agree with this or don't agree with this. I started Call of Duty in Modern Warfare 2. I sucked at it. I, was, I, I had just gotten back into gaming and I started out playing Halo 3. And then I bought Modern Warfare 2 about two weeks after it came out. And I was terrible at it. I got smashed. I was the noob. I was the guy that was getting my ass kicked. And uh, that made it challenging for me. It made me want to get better. And uh, throughout time, uh, I've never became an amazing Call of Duty player, but I've gotten to the level to where I can go in and stomp people sometimes. And that's what's kept me playing all these years is to be able to say, if I play five games, you know, I can probably stomp people in two to three of those games. I might not do good the other two games. I, I usually don't do terrible, but... Um, well, it depends on the connection, because the connection's always been an issue with me. Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I know a lot of you guys have connection issues, but all connection issues aside and everything like that, you want to be able to go in and pub stomp. Everybody does. It doesn't matter if you do YouTube. It doesn't matter if you play at home. It doesn't matter if you play solo or if you play with friends. Your objective in the game is to be at the top of the leaderboard, and you want to have the most kills, less deaths, action-packed, running around, killing people, uh, it makes you feel good. That's why people enjoyed Call of Duty for so many years, because they, they could, you know, feel like they did some amazing stuff. And then now, if you were a, a bad player, and you were just starting out, it made you want to keep playing because you wanted to feel like, I can't be this bad, I'm going to learn this game, and then I'm going to, you know, be a good player. Um, so, you know... For whatever reason, I think skill ma matchmaking, skill based matchmaking, is putting some kind of you know it. It's gonna be harder because I mean I'm not gonna lie. I've got like a 1.08 KD right now, or 1.09 or something. I'm not. I don't even have a good KD in uh, in advanced warfare, but that's gonna match me up against a lot of 1.09 KD players and 0.75 on up to like 0.12 or 1.25 or something like that. And um, I have good games still. They're, they're, they're here and there. But I used to enjoy, and sometimes I still do, playing with my friends. Now, when I play with my friends, and I don't know how this works, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm even saying this right, some of my friends have a, a lot higher KD. So when I get in the lobbies and they're the host, I'm getting hosted up against higher up players then I'm getting stomped so you know then you got people reverse why do people reverse boost people are reverse boosting because they want to be able to get those games they want to feel like like a lot of the reverse boosting is for YouTube videos but the the reason that people are doing it is because they want to get better games they want to make themselves look better um, I have no problem see this is the thing I, I still enjoy the game to an extent uh, it does make me, you know, irritated that I can't get those beast gameplays that I used to here and there. But, uh, another thing with the game, and, and I probably should have said this earlier because we're five minutes in, 
people have already been like, ah, I've heard enough. Another thing with this game is the reason Call of Duty was growing was because people were getting those crazy gameplays and posting them on YouTube. And now with the, the skill-based matchmaking, that's going to dwindle down some. That's going to make people uh, not be able to post as much content uh, to promote the game. And also, uh, the biggest problem is, is when you bring skill-based into it, and don't get me wrong, I respect what all the MLG guys do. Uh, they're really good players. I watch their stuff, but the majority of people, unless they're going to an MLG event or watching an MLG event going on, they don't want to see somebody going positive five in the in the team barely winning. I mean, but like I said, I like a challenge. So to me, some of the best games I get, I might be playing uh, Kill Confirmed and, and, and we win by one tag. That's, that's exciting. That's exhilarating to me. But for the average viewer... They're going to be like, you barely won. Why are you posting this video? Like, that's the mentality of the viewers as far as I have seen. The majority of the viewers want to tune in and see DNA bombs, double DNA bombs, or, you know, 35 and 1, or 40 and 2, 60. Market J, his videos are amazing. He's playing uh, Momentum. I can't even kill people in Momentum. I don't know. I, I need to call Mark of J up and say... Yo, give me a tutorial on how to play this game type because he's actually dropping. I, I seen him drop like a 72 and 15 or 20, which a lot of you guys were. He died 20 times. 72 kills, 20 deaths to me is amazing. It's action packed, non stop. He don't camp. He runs out in the open, triple kills, double kills all day. Like, uh, some people are doing it. I don't know how they're doing it, but I mean, he's always been a good player, way better than me, but. Um, that's what people want to see. People want to see people slaughtering people in Call of Duty. That's that's what makes it fun. Um, and I'm not going to just, like, I don't want to make this like a 30-minute video. So, so I'm going to end it with this. Another problem with Call of Duty that has not been addressed, will probably never be addressed, and won't happen. Um, I started in Modern Warfare 2, and since Modern Warfare 2, I have seen the kill streak, the... Uh, Damage that the kill streaks do decline over every single title, and you know somebody like Mark J. Uh, I don't think Mark J. likes to run kill streaks. He likes gun on gun action. That's great. He's good enough to keep the other team from getting their kill streaks, so therefore it doesn't even bother him. But an average player like me and a, and a viewers a lot of times they want to see you stack these high kill streaks, and when you get the kill streaks, they want to see them do work. I remember the chopper gunner. Uh, people, because I didn't run the chopper gunner because I don't like stuff, I like the AI stuff but the chopper gunner people would hop in that thing and get 15 or 20 kills with one kill streak. it was hard to get, but it was worth it um, my favorite kill streaks are the Predator Missile, the Harrier Strike and uh, I'd run the AC-130 or the chopper I like the chopper because you could just put it on AI and let it do work and it gets you a couple kills but, but look, the Predator Missile uh, 1 to 3 1 to 4 kills almost guaranteed as long as you know how to use it the harrier strike oh my god it would drop the bombs and then it would stay there and shoot at people if you get into a lobby where people didn't shoot it down instantly that thing could get you seven or eight nine kills by itself and that was what made it fun to me like it was fun for me to get the kill streaks you know be doing good in the game and then the kill streaks start killing people i'm running around killing people and that's why I don't like skill-based matchmaking. That and the problems with the connection, until you take it out and show me that that wasn't the problem, I feel like that is the problem with all the connection in the game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, leave me your opinions, your thoughts, your comments on all these things I talked about. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, uh, feel free to subscribe and check out my news channel in the description. I'm going to put some annotations on the screen. They'll probably be running the whole video. Trying to get the subs up on that, so if you go over there and like the videos, be sure to subscribe. I'm out. Peace.